Welcome to The World According to Mike Graham. Well, it's been another weird week in the world of news, but I'm happy to report we've got it all covered. We're going to have Prime Minister for the week. Uh, we're going to have a deep dive, of course, starting off the show. Uh, and that's going to be into the weird world of Greta Thunberg. <laughs> Greta Tintin Thunberg became a climate activist at the age of 15. For many years, people refused to listen to me. Children were very mean. After gaining worldwide attention, Miss Thunberg was invited to address the United Nations. And to avoid emitting carbon, the humble teenager sailed from Plymouth to New York on a yacht worth over four million pounds. But there's no kitchen, no toilet. We all have to do it in a bucket, but I mean, that is, <laughs> that is fine. And when that £4 million yacht finally docked in New York, she reprimanded all of the world leaders for not doing the same thing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you! And when she's not munching on organic avocados flown in from far away, Greta loves a bit of karaoke. There are no strangers to love. Sadly, young Greta has had a tough couple of weeks. First of all, she was arrested in London for being really annoying. Hello, but we don't get to be able to close the door. We're standing there, are we? So I'm asking you to move back. And just when she thought it couldn't get any worse, she tweeted a photo supporting Gaza without condemning Hamas. But there's more. She also included a blue octopus, which many see as an anti-Semitic symbol. But don't worry, Greta. If it all falls apart, you can always have a second career presenting the weather. And now, the weather forecast with Greta Thunberg. Hot! That was the weather with Greta Thunberg. And that was my deep dive into the weird world of Greta Thunberg. Uh, Mr. Russell Quirk is here. Russell, a very good uh, evening to you. Good to see you. Uh, great to see you too. Um, Greta Thunberg, a sort of phenomena uh, of our times, I suppose you might say. Well, you might say. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I find her intensely irritating. Yeah. But part of me actually finds her slightly quirky, slightly kind of unusual and kind of funny. I don't think we should take it seriously. Would, would we know. say odd? Odd, I think, is fair. I think that's absolutely fair. But, I mean, you see from the start of it, you know, where she sat out the outside... I mean, I, I worry about her parents, you know, yeah. because they were the ones that said to her, look, don't worry about going to school. All you've got to do is sit outside, say there's a strike, uh, and you can save the planet. Well, they've pushed her, haven't they? Yeah. So, no so, so legend goes. They've yes. pushed her to do this. They're almost living their yeah. lives from climate activism mm. points of view yeah. as, um, yeah, vicarious. I mean, if they had a, a Spotify podcast, I suppose Spotify might regard them as grifters. Yes. I mean, I think that's the kind of category we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they want fame through her, yeah. no, I, I would argue. And look, I know she also has her issues. You know, she has Asperger's, yeah, yeah. famously. Right. Um, the, you know, maybe this all is as much about fame and glory mm. as it is about her kind of quest, yes. her, her crusade. Do you know what I think it's also about? I think it's about the numpties who have been all over the Western world looking for something to hang on to. You yeah. know, they've long given up on religion. Uh, they can't understand that mm. um, because they think God is a joke unless you happen to be uh, from a religion that they don't want to criticise, in which yep. case religion's fine, mm -hmm. and that's all very well. But they're all looking for some kind of leader and they kind of fell upon Greta Thunberg as, as this kind of, you know, icon of pureness because she was only 15, well, 15 and, or 16 you know, years nobody old. could give her a hard time. And anybody who criticised her was immediately said yeah, yeah, to yeah. be an absolute horrible but, individual. But, but surely they, they must have asked themselves the question, I mean, is there nobody else apart from a 15 right. or 16 year old? Yeah. And, and how also can you give credibility to mm. someone on the kind of world stage that right. left education at the age of yeah, 15? Exactly. And here we now have the kind of the, uh, the antecedents becoming reality. She's now 20. Uh, she's now sort of moved into standing up for Palestine yeah. as opposed to just standing up for... Yeah, uh, where's the climate for, connection for, there? For, for climate, right? And now uh, we've got this sort of... The follow-on from her are these middle-aged women who appear on TV weeping and demanding that everybody stops working because yeah. there's a climate emergency. And how, but, can you, but, how can you let it happen? Yeah, but, Mike, that's why I'm very cynical about the whole kind of climate thing mm. being her passion. Yes. Why would you not just continue with that focus yeah. rather than now getting involved in the whole Israel-Gaza right. thing, which has absolutely nothing to do whatsoever right. with the climate? Also, if you were that turned on by, by climate and data and, you know, saving the planet, wouldn't you have gone to university and become a climate scientist? Yeah, maybe. maybe. Rather than sitting around or, um, getting arrested or, and apparently moving to Dorset. The last thing we heard, oh, she, really? when she was arrested just recently by the by, by the cops in in Britain. She gave an address in Dorset as her new 
base. Yeah. And I said last week only on Plank of the Week, isn't it ironic that she's chosen to live on the Jurassic Coast? Yes, it is. Uh, which is full of fossils. She was actually, <laughs> uh, she was actually um, demonstrating on behalf of fossil-free London. Yes, looking after fossils it doesn't want them to turn into oil. But, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it is all very, very odd. And it's, you know, you would think if she really wanted to make a point, she'd do what most of us would do if we mm. want to do that and get elected. Yeah. Um, but like a lot of these people with oh, a yeah. camera in front of them, they don't want to get, they don't want the responsibility of election, mm. but they want to shout their mouths off. Yeah. She's also apparently now suing multiple governments. Oh, is she? Yeah. So the likes of got a little list. Oh, well, that's good news yeah, for yeah. Jolie and Moron. He'll yeah. probably be but, having a piece of that. What's really it? interesting is so project. she and her mates are suing Argentina, Brazil, France, Germany, and Turkey right. uh, for not being on track with their kind of climate. Uh, oh, what their broken direction. Promises. But she's not suing mm. India. China, United States, who are responsible for 75% of yes. the world's carbon emissions. And she's not suing Britain either. No. Is that because she's living here? Well, not yet. <laughs> well, I mean, is that because she's living here? Yeah, maybe. But this is because these ludicrous uh, climate promises get made, yep. which mean absolutely nothing. Yep. I mean, who could forget Alok Sharma in tears at the end of COP27, I think it was, up in Glasgow, uh, because he'd been up all night. I mean, I've been up all night loads of times and I've never, ended, I've never ended up in tears. No, you don't cry. I mean, sometimes there's been some problems. O only in exceptional but, circumstances you know, yeah, here, Mike. Very, yeah. very exceptional. <laughs> yeah, when I had to go home. Um, but no, but the thing is, you know, she's created this kind of movement of people and we are still having to deal with these bozos. Just yeah. stop oil. Exactly. You know, uh, Extinction Rebellion is still knocking about. They're all still trying to raise awareness. You don't need to raise the, awareness the, the, anymore. The consequence of this extremism, and it is climate yeah. extremism, is that Greta and her ilk won't listen right. to the logical, commonsensical point of view. No. So when you say to them, as you've done many, many, many times, yeah. and many presenters have on this mm. station, well, OK, what if we turned off all the boilers yeah. and all the internal combustion yeah. engines? What then? You know, apart from, right. obviously, we all know we descend into the Middle Ages, right? right? We go back 500 years. Exactly. Um, but they can't answer that. Because they're so zealot-like, mm. they're so extreme, they're so corrupted, really, yeah. by this kind of this north star of you know absolute no carbon. Right. Um, but how can you take them seriously when they don't have an answer? No, you can't. And again, I mean, we're facing with uh, faced with vandalism as well of the, to the nth degree. We've now got these extinction uh, or extinguish rebellion type people who are sticking lentils into your car uh, tires uh, to, <laughs> to, to let the air just, to let the air out of them, the which is really dangerous. I mean, it's obviously so appropriate. It's got to be lentils. It could be a little bit of pasta. <laughs> Bit of yogurt or rice or something. Yeah, yeah. Maybe but, they yeah. could knit, knit some tools. Yeah, and it could weapons. be a bit of steak. No, absolutely not. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's seriously dangerous. And how dare these bloody people yeah. think that because you drive a nice car that happens to run on petrol or diesel, mm -hmm. that you are somehow responsible uh, for Mansfield getting flooded? Yeah. You're not. Yeah. And I said this to Dale Vince this week. You know. If you've been doing this for 30 years and you've been getting uh, emissions down for 30 years and it's still not working, maybe you should give up because mm. maybe but, you can't do anything. But you, the public could be forgiven, I mean, those of us on the centre-right as well, for, you know thinking that this is all about money ultimately. So yeah. Dale Vince, of course, he famously has ecotricity, yeah. which is an, an, an ecology-related electricity yes. business. But of course, it's in his interest to make sure that fossil is. fuels are turned off yeah. and so-called sustainable fuels, mm. if there are such a thing, uh, you know, are, are increased in mm. terms of number. Greta Thunberg herself, you know, she has a Greta Thunberg Foundation, yeah. which raised about one and a quarter million yeah. quid last year. Well, where's that coming from yeah. and where's it going? Because What's she spending are, the money on? There are loads of these shadowy organisations who fund all this stuff. We'll get into that for another time. But Russell, that was brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that's the weird world, the wacky world, you might say, of Greta Tintin Thunberg. In a week when former President Donald Trump stormed out of a courtroom, here he is with Trump's takedown. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. But we don't get scared. We don't get scared. I'll tell you what. I don't mind being Nelson Mandela because I'm doing it for a reason. I'm doing it for a reason. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Electric cars. Let me tell you something about electric cars. This week, the startling piece of information emerged that will stop you in your tracks if you're sitting there in a Tesla uh, or a cheaper version of a Tesla. Because it turns out that insurance companies are starting to get very worried about electric cars. Do you know that John Lewis Financial Arm has now stopped insuring people with electric cars? Whether you're a new user or whether you're a current user, they've basically said, look, we don't know how good or bad those batteries are in that car, so we're not going to insure it anymore. So come from forward a few months and you'll find that some other insurance companies will stop insuring electric cars because you know what happens if you have a bang in an electric car and something goes wrong they don't know what actually damage has been done so electric cars nine danker 
Well, that's the end of part one for The World According to Mike Graham. Coming up next, it's going to be Prime Minister for the week and an apology. Welcome back to The World According to Mike Graham. It is, of course, Friday night, and it's time for Prime Minister for the Week. So now it's time to introduce you to this week's panellists for Prime Minister for a Week. And as I always say, uh, Prime Minister for a Week doesn't sound like such a bad idea after we had one for a month. Um, and maybe they can do even better than Liz Truss. Uh, Richard Sunak's been in for a year... Seems longer, doesn't it, somehow? Anyway, here we have Andrew Eborn, barrister and futurist, it says here, mm -hmm. uh, which is always good. Better to be, to be a futurist than a pastist, I suppose. Um, and Jeremy Spake, for the first time, welcome. Thank uh, you. You've shocked me by telling me that your appearance in the world's first reality TV show, Airport, was much longer ago than I remember. Yeah, um, scary. You are, you are being called uh, the first reality TV star. And, of course, aviation expert. You started in Airport. I did um, indeed. Which was a brilliant show, I have to say. Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed it. I don't watch any reality TV now. In fact, I don't watch anything apart from talk TV because it's in my contract. But, yeah, <laughs> very good. But there we are. Andrew, let's yes. come to you first. Prime Minister of the Week, what would you do? Well, the first thing I do, we are living in a diseased information age. And we the are. first thing we have to do, people work throughout their life. Yes. They pay tax and so on and so right. forth, which is Ridiculous great. amounts of Ridiculous tax. Ridiculous amounts, 45% on the top rate right. and so on and so forth. And then when you die, Mm. If you earn more than £325,000 left yes. after all of that, you have to pay 40% again. Right. Crazy. So and now would, because of the price of property, if yeah. somebody's got a house, presumably... And lots of people are... You're, you're going over that quite easily now in a way that you wouldn't have cash before. Rich, uh, basically cash poor yeah. and asset rich. If it's, mm. it's 500000 I think it is a property if you give it to your kids. Right. But it's still crazy. Yeah. We should... And so what I would suggest that we do is we should abolish inheritance tax. I think we should abolish any tax which involves taxing people more than once. Yes. So, for example, if you pay income tax, you shouldn't pay VAT, Right. If you don't pay income tax, you pay, pay VAT. VAT. I mean, that's one idea. Yeah. Um, but what do you think of his idea, Jeremy? I like the idea of not penalising people twice. Thank yeah. you. Um, but it does give the old tax man a bit of a let off, doesn't it? Because that's less work for them to do. Well, no, but it's easy. But it, I, I tell you what. Well, that's good then. You can get yeah. rid of some of them. That's and true. Don't need as better. many civil less servants. Of a burden on, I like You know, that you can get rid of the uh, inheritance tax department yeah. altogether. Good Go idea. On. But and I tell you what, it's actually really inefficient because mm. it only raises seven billion. Right. And if you look at that in terms of real terms and other, other ways right. that you can raise money, it's tiddly well, it in the is, whole realm of things. Because only governments can actually invent themselves and grow yep. if they can keep taxing us. I mean, you think of council tax, for example, 75% of your council tax goes on paying the wages and the pensions yep. of the people collecting it. Yep. And you go, well, if there weren't so many of you, you could produce the bleeding council tax, couldn't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. You could indeed. I mean, this is called free marketeering. Yep. The Conservatives used to believe in it. I don't know what happened. Um, Jeremy, who's, what's your first idea? So my first one, you know, I've spent my entire life working with people on the minimum wage. Yeah. And I kind of think it's about time that perhaps politicians were on the minimum wage, mm. along with some of the Now, this is refreshing. Service. Yes. people are always saying to me, why don't we pay them more money? I'm like, why would you? <laughs> No, 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 no. So what you do is you put them on the, the bare minimum wage, you put the, the senior civil servants on there with them because yes, they're definitely. in cahoots with everything. Yeah. And then what you do is the electorate, the constituency gets to decide whether they're a, an OK performer, mm. a reasonably good um, performer, or they're cracking. And if yes. they're cracking, they'll get full salary. Is this based on a sort of weekly vote? How do you do it? Well, you do it. They, they've got to go to the constituency every week, right. hold surgery. It's not Actually, like one of those um, votes that you have on TV where you just press a you know, button. Yeah, you something. can do that. Yeah. I like the idea of that. Yeah. Also, your constituents will watch you in Parliament during Prime Minister's question time and things like that. And possibly, you know, we could introduce a cattle prod just to give them a little yeah. bit of a shock if they're, <laughs> if they're straying from party yes. line. Or also, like, wake them up from time to time. Well, there is that yeah. to it. And, yes. and I love the idea because you're going to get more and more people involved with politics. Yes. If you have the idea of doing that with a cattle prod, They'd love I it. guarantee... The Great mm. British product would we'll, we'll yeah. love that, wouldn't they? Because people don't know that you can actually track the efficiency of your MP because they don't know how to do it. Yes. You yes. know, there are websites where you can go, yeah. see which uh, debates they entered into, see what they said, see how much money they've spent, yeah. see how much they've claimed. You can do all that, but who's got time? You know, and also I think the problem is, is so many people watch Parliament and see it empty so often. Yes. And it's probably a bit unfair to say that they're all off skiving uh, or fondling each other in some gentleman's club in Mayfair. But the point is, is that, you know, 
they, there are times when there should be more of them there. No, yes. you're absolutely... You know, that's where they work. And, and, Mike, you're so right. People don't know why they're not there. Right. And all you do... And, and it's funny, ever since they started televising Parliament, mm. people sort of spartaned up a little yes. bit and so on and so forth. Right. But now they don't bother to Apart turn up. Apart from Jeremy Corbyn, from I mean, Jeremy. he still looks the same. Indeed, right. but their behaviours have not changed, have they? Right. But There's the cattle prodding will make them change. Yes, you see, every time they jeer or they nod off or they... You just give them a little so bit of a So would there shock. be a sliding scale of this before? Absolutely. So, it, so, it, so they'd start low yep. and they'd get bonuses for what, for example? So 12 and a half grand starting salary. Yeah. We'll treat them like cabin crew, yeah. keeping the aviation theme going. Yes. Right. And then each time they manage to get all the trolleys in a line, if that makes sense, yeah. so actually meet the needs of their mm. constituents. Right. So rather than sitting there necessarily completely towing the party mm. line, because sometimes you actually need to stand up for the people who... Uh, yes. gracious enough to put you in, in the position yeah. you're in. Well, I mean, they do represent the people that elected them. Yeah. They don't just represent the party that appointed them. Correct. Exactly right. that. And Sounds it's... very democratic. Yeah, I like the idea it's of it. It's very unusual for the independent republic. Um, yeah. Right, Andrew, yes. your next one. Well, that basically, we have to embrace... I, around the world, I talk about artificial intelligence yeah. as a futurist, mm. and my job is to advise companies about the threats and the opportunities. Yeah. And I'm I happy say... to find any kind of intelligence around the world, <laughs> I'm afraid there's not a lot of it about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That, it? exactly. So basically, I always say it's our greatest human achievement, mm. but also potentially yeah. our biggest existential threat. Well, only threat. this week, Rishi Sunak has set up uh, a safety institute. He has. I don't know what that means, and I don't know what it's going to do. What it is, it's the first summit happening in Bletchley Park, yeah. the, the Enigma Code, oh, and all yeah. those glorious yeah. things, and it's looking at safety around AI. We are the best in the world at doing this. Are we? we are, because a lot of it was invented here. We punch way above our yeah. weight in media and entertainment. But why is it, and answer me this, why is it that all the people that have invented AI are yes. the ones who are telling us how dangerous it is? Well, they are, but they're also well, telling you the great achievements. Shouldn't they have made it safer? Well, I think the reality is rather like if I had a fork, yeah. I can eat spaghetti with a fork or yeah. I can stab you in the back. True. What you don't do, I would never stab you in the back, thank Mike. You very much. I thank you. I, I, what you don't do is stop production of forks. What right. you do is regulate the behavior. Yes. So AI will impact every single aspect of our life mm. from medicine. We are discovering things which we thought were previously impossible. Yes. In the creative industries, we've mm. got all sorts of wonderful collaborations and so on and so yes. forth. So the reality is it's going to change every single aspect of our life. Right. Also, however... But who's going to be in charge of what it changes? That's my point. Well, this is the yeah. point. This is why you need the regulations right. to make sure that... So it's a balance. You need mm. to look at both sort of sides mm. of it. Um, 300 million jobs mm. will be lost, they reckon, yeah. uh, according to Goldman Sachs as yeah. a result. Well... Goldman Sachs would know because they've lost a load of jobs in the past. Well, exactly. I mean, they, they, they know. They know. <laughs> Practice yeah. bankrupt in Greece. Well, they, they know. Them, you know. <laughs> We're going to our resident expert on losing jobs. Yeah. Let's go talk yeah. to them. Um, but at the same time, tremendous opportunities. I mm. say health-wise, things are going to be massively improved. Yeah. It's already proven that we've got diseases which we previously thought could never be cured. Yeah. We're now curing those. Right. Creatively, it is superb. You're getting wonderful collaborations. But it is front and centre of the actors' strike. It's right. front and centre exactly. of the right. Because right. yeah. you can do one day's work, and as a result of one day's work, we can reproduce you forever. Mm. So you can do the Mike Graham show yeah, in you can't, eternity. You can't do it with me. Yeah, absolutely not. Because <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to say uh, until I've said it. Um, Jeremy, what's your next one? Well, my next one actually is all about voting. Yeah. Because um, I think we're a bit apathetic to voting. We are, especially now. Yeah, because what's the point? Because yeah. it's all grey, nobody actually right. does anything. So the idea is, like Australia, bring in mandatory voting, mm. which with it comes a series of referendums. So every time there's going to be a major issue where yeah. countries got to decide together, rather than somebody like Rishi or whoever mm. going off and deciding we're going to spend millions on this... Mind you, or... we've only had, like, one referendum within most people's recent memory. Exactly. And that was a bit of a mess, wasn't it? It was, but we can get better at it. I mean, we can still... potentially use your AI there to you get go. better at it. Right. I mean, people are still taking lumps out of each other and it was like seven years ago. Yeah, you well... Know, we can't imagine having one of those every month. That is very true, but you wouldn't be having it every month. Wouldn't you? It would only be on major issues. They do this where... in Switzerland, don't they? They, have they a lot do. Of referendum they do. All the and, time. and it kind of works. Mm. But if you make it easy with technology as well, Truly. Though, you can be at your home, say, who am I voting for? I'm voting yeah. for Mike because he's the best. Yeah. Correct. Do that and you're done. Right. That's OK. But then you see you've got everybody buying into it. If yes. everybody has to vote, then... What happens if you no... don't vote? Well, then you get... Electric, jail. do your cattle prods. You could potentially jail. prod cattle prods. Jail. <laughs> oh, jail, jail as well. Oh, jail. Yeah. That's what they do in Australia. Right. So they do, yeah. don't they? Spoil your paper, you... Well, they're used to that, aren't they? So well, exactly. It's got to be good. Yeah. But I think something along those lines where you, you kind of... You've got to participate. Make it interesting, though. Let reality shows. Yeah. I don't know, the, the you could make it like a lottery, there. couldn't you? Yeah, of you course could. you could. You make it like a lottery. Make everyone pay a pound. Yeah, but great and then, idea. Um, somebody wins... If I you get know, it right, spot million. the ball. I like that. Exactly. See, it's not difficult to come up with these ideas. No, Brilliant. there's plenty you know, of We've ideas. literally done more in 10 minutes than the government have done in 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so a week is a long time in politics. I, What's your is. next one? Well, my last one is to sort of incentivise people to work. Right. We have a we great 
British one. You could pay them. I mean, that is called an incentive. But, in most but also, at the moment, you're, you're getting it for some people are getting paid anyway for not working. Right. Uh, it goes back to my tax point mm. beforehand. Yes. But it's more than just money. I always say that a fee is a fair exchange of energy. Yeah. So a fair exchange yeah. of energy means that you've got to turn around and say, what are you getting as a result of yes. this? And get work satisfaction. Let make sure that's uh, appropriate. This is bad news for the civil service because they're all going to be fired, aren't they? Well, but possibly. But also, you if you get they've rid done of... done all day. You can get rid of they're the boring the jobs. Yeah. So that's why I say about AI gets rid of the money. The, the, the well, yeah, but what do you then do with the people that were doing the boring jobs? Well, they, they can basically have more leisure time. They don't and want more leisure time. They can't afford to do anything. <laughs> well, but they've got to get paid. But just the flip side of that... You don't want to start that, giving me some universal uh, uh, payment system. Well, it might work. Oh, we, my we God. Should so you were doing well, so then. <laughs> he was doing well. Unemployment <laughs> burden? Well, no. What do but, we do with them? Well, it depends on what you do with your life. And, and right. what happens when people retire, yeah. the mortality rate goes through the roof yeah. in, in, in all seriousness. In some ways, that's good, because then you save money on the pension system. But this is why you need to care about people. Now, I, 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 what I, think I don't we care have about a <laughs> We have a fractured society. <laughs> I want to encourage the old and the young to get together. Right. Let's improve society. Never has what, been What, you mean like Leonardo DiCaprio and his girlfriends? Well, well, that's <laughs> that sort of thing. I'm all in favour of that. I, um, <laughs> Jeremy, uh, we've only got a couple of minutes. So What's your last my one? My last one is urban sprawl. Yes. So I live out in the country right. and I just see Not this... for long. No, indeed. Yeah. So in... It's HS2 coming your way. No, thankfully. All oh, right. Uh, that's one of those long-term projects. Yes. It's no longer a long-term yeah. project. Right. But the, the, the business of, of the sprawl of, of building going on, particularly in the south of the UK, has to stop because there are plenty of empty houses mm. all up and down the country. So the idea is you're obviously going to put a whole load of people out of I work am. so they can go up to places where there's houses already sitting empty, yeah. do a bit of home DIY. Um, but I do think we need to sort of slow the... The urban sprawl down. Yeah. But we also so need what to build homes. Building house, yeah, yeah, but we're building them, but for what purpose? The biggest problem. Because there's housing currently sitting. You take a, a yeah. county like Lincolnshire. Yes. Um, low unemployment because there's not any employment. Um, but they've got shed loads of houses sitting empty. The biggest problem. But nobody wants to live there because there's no work, right? No, so you, you have to have a programme where you transfer businesses and incentivise businesses mm. to move to those places yes. to create employment opportunities so that we're not just building for the sake of mm. building. Trying yeah. to get on the property ladder as right. a kid these days right. when you're starting work is virtually impossible. Well, yeah. it depends where you live as well, that's though. I mean, that's true. the point. I mean, that's partly what you're saying. Now, yeah. uh, all fascinating ideas. I mean, we've, we've compartmentalised them right into a tiny, tiny little uh, piece of conversation, but they're both great, actually, but, um, Andrew, you were doing brilliantly until I decided to work out that you were a bit of a do-gooder, which we don't <laughs> like around here at the Independent Republic. You know, all this, you know, lovey-lovey, sing, sing, oh, kumbaya right? around the fire <laughs> and sort of holding hands and not doing any work at all of any kind, expecting everybody to be happy and wealthy. I mean, it's a bit pie in the sky, I have to say. Not that, not that it's a bad thing, but I'm going to give it to Jeremy. Thank you Because very much. I like his idea of the old uh, uh, electrocutor uh, in uh, in the House of Commons. Only very mild, of course. Yes, I, I wish would, to hurt, yeah, hurt anybody. Just a, a sedative. Um, and, of course, uh, mandatory voting, good. And sorting out the housing, I think, good. But very good for both of you. I mean, you both you. Well, make congratulations. much better Thank you so much. Well Thank Definitely you so both much. make better Prime Ministers than Liz Truss. There's no question about that. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was Andrew Eborn and Jeremy Sprake. Uh, and that was Prime Minister for a week. That was The World According to Mike Graham. There'll be more, same time, next week.